Time now for today's uh, Focus report. We head to Italy, where the flow of migrants and refugees arriving continues unabated. Well, one of the most uh, dramatic aspects of the arrivals is the ever-increasing number of miners who travel alone without their families. Our correspondent sent us this report from uh, Sicily, the main point of arrival for migrants and refugees on the peninsula. A typical scene in this southern port of Sicily. In the last few months, the flow of asylum seekers has been increasing. But today, this group that is disembarking is different. Among the 200 people, the majority are minors travelling alone without their parents. When they arrive, they're exhausted by their journey. They find it difficult to express how they feel. They'll talk about it later. Some of them are just happy to have succeeded in getting here safely. Others arrive in a state of shock because they've probably suffered from traumatic experiences. In 2016, over 25,000 miners landed in Italy on their own, a record number that will probably be beaten this year. Liliana de Maria has been managing host communities for children for over 30 years. She has never seen such large numbers of minors. Before, the arrivals happened only in the summer period. Now, it's throughout the whole year. Many of them are 13 or 14 years old. Suleiman and his cousin come from the Ivory Coast. They are 11 and 12 years old. On their own, they have crossed Mali, Algeria and Libya before boarding a makeshift boat to cross the Mediterranean. As soon as they arrived in Sicily, they were placed in this centre along with other Italian children in difficulty. There are ten children living here. Suleiman arrived here at the end of March. He has not seen his family for months. It was hard, very hard, because when I left my family, I knew that the next time I would see them would only be when I'm much older and grown up. So it was really hard to leave my family. Two months ago, the Italian government passed a law to protect migrant minors, a first in Europe. The law calls for the setting up of specialised centres, financed in part by the European Union like this one in Catane. Here, most people are adolescents. They were transferred directly from the ports on their arrival. Welcome to Italy. We're happy that you made it here safe and sound. We need to have a bit more information about you so we can get to know you. With the help of a translator, each youngster tells their story. I started the journey when I left Ivory Coast. I was approached by a truck driver. He took me to Burkina Faso. After that, I left for Niger. We crossed the desert to arrive in Libya. There is a form for each miner with his personal information. Little by little, details are added by the representatives of the Italian authorities. Their objective is to gather all the material concerning these miners into a national database. This form accompanies the miner as his situation evolves. Everything is centralized to better assist the youngster on his path. Everything is down here. Social care assistance, legal and administrative documents. Everything, including health details. After a first interview, each youngster has a medical checkup. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Ciao. Ciao. The objective is to determine whether the youngster needs any specific treatment or medicine. We often have to deal with skin infections or pathologies which are linked to an injury caused by the rough conditions endured during their journey. Things brought about by the sun, salt water or bruising. But it's the psychological wounds of these uprooted youngsters which are often the hardest to heal. 
Ragazzi, raccogliamo le melanzane? Cerchiamo di capire quali sono quelle più grosse per adesso. Gabriele, is the center psychologist? Informal conversations in the vegetable patch, a part of the therapy. This is like an incursion into their world. By doing this, we're opening doors into the life stories of these boys. This kind of environment is often something they're familiar with, so it helps them to structure their identity, rebuild their self-confidence. Questo qua esiste in Mali? Sì, E come si chiama? Cipom, cipom. Cipom. Questi qua sono un po' gialli. Because they're minors, these youngsters cannot be deported out of the country. They will stay here until their visa request is filed, at which point they will be moved into long-term centers. Only a small number will be taken in by foster families. Giuseppe and his wife were among the first people in Sicily to open their doors to such minors. Alhaye left Gambia at 17. Today, he is a fully fledged member of the family. In Africa, he only has brothers, so he treats my daughter like a sister and spoils her a little too much. But with the little one, they squabble. Yeah, that's true. He calls me mum and I like that. He shows me respect and he treats me as though he really were my son. Despite the efforts to supervise these young arrivals, last year more than 6,500 miners disappeared into thin air, attempting to reach northern Europe. We return to Catani. It's excursion day. Today's programme is swimming in the Mediterranean, a moment of rest and relaxation. The sea where so many of their travel companions lost their lives. This year, more than 11,000 youngsters decided to risk everything to reach Europe by sea. Today's focus report coming from our team on the ground in uh, Sicily. For more, Federica Toscano is uh, head of programme at Missing Children Europe. Ms Toscano, thanks for speaking to us. Uh, we saw in that report migrant and refugee children are often facing quite difficult situations when they arrive alone in Europe. It seems that there's a real lack of proper centres to welcome them. Yes, indeed, that is one of the main issues that we need to face. Migration of children in Europe is not new, and yet, still, we don't have enough reception capacity to host them all in an appropriate way, especially the youngest one. And it's something that uh, there is resource for, and the Commission, for example, put every year a lot of resources into this for member states to actually use them and protect better children. Still, we are very far from the situation that we consider ideal. But owing to this lack of proper reception centres that could welcome young children, or young people in, indeed, arriving by themselves, it seems that often they're held in the same detention centres as adults. Yes, and it's a big issue. First of all, it goes against the rights. They have the rights to be held into centres that are appropriate for their age and uh, not into, uh, not next to adults, but also not, never detention is in the best interest of the child. And best interest of the child is, is the guiding principle for every action and every decision taken for a child. So indeed, we, we are very much against this. And the Commission recently has published a communication that underlines how this needs to be changed and how it is important to find alternatives to that and use detention. In our opinion, detention should never be used, but unfortunately European law allows it to be used in when, there, when actually it is the last resort. But it, international jurisdiction, international law is very clear and human rights law is very clear in say detention should never be used when children are the ones who are under protection. I mean, your organization has said in the past that because of children being held in the same kind of detention centers as adults, that depression, anxiety, and even self-harm among uh, minor migrants is uh, on the rise. Yes, indeed. Mental health is one of the main issues when it comes to dealing with migrant children nowadays. Uh, and it's also one of the reasons why children go missing. I mean, I heard in the, in the, in the um, uh, reportage that you just played, it is true that many children move because they want to reach Northern Europe, but it's not the only case. It is also because they, they, they have their own mental issues. They don't trust the people with whom they are. Uh, the, the reception facilities are not appropriate. So we need to take this into account and not just uh, discharge the disappearance of a child just because they want to go to Northern Europe. We have to understand every single mental issue, physical issue, health issue of every child to be able to host them and to give them the protection that they deserve. 
Just tell us why we're seeing such a rise in the amount of uh, young people arriving in Europe by themselves, unaccompanied by parents or other family members. It's, uh, it's indeed something that it's linked to the fact that many of these children come from countries where there is a situation of crisis, of war. For example, the majority of migrant children coming to Europe last year was Afghans, Syrians, Iraqis, Eritreans. So in many cases, family put all their resources to at least give some of their children the possibility to have a better life. And that's why they come to Europe. In some cases, they don't have families anymore. In some cases, in some cases families have been separated in their country of origin and they don't know what happened to their families. So that's one of the reasons why many of them come unaccompanied. But it, there is one sad reason as well, that is families may have actually died in the past to come to Europe, because we have to remember that every child that arrives in Europe le left their own hometown much uh, earlier, a long time ago. And okay. a lot of things happened on the way. OK, Federica Toscano, your head of programme at Missing Children Europe. Thanks for your time today on France 24. We're going to take a short break, but well, coming up uh, next will be more international headlines. Do stay tuned. You're watching France 24.